Oh, AstraZeneca's vaccine announcement has drawn international attention today. But what do scientists think about it? For more on this, we're joined now by infectious diseases expert Michael Tidesley from the University of Warwick over in the UK. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on your news. What did you make of the announcement? Well, I think it's certainly a very promising announcement. I think we've now had over the last couple of weeks several really promising announcements about different vaccines and their levels of protection, which is really good. Um, so it indicates that really probably there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously, where we need to be a little bit careful here, of course, is not getting too complacent. We've still got a little bit of a way to go. We may see some of these vaccines rolled out possibly before Christmas sometime in December is suggested. But I suspect it's going to be well into the spring, possibly the early summer before we reach the kind of number of doses going out to the population that's going to enable us to hopefully get close to herd immunity and ease out of some restrictions. So really good news. But I think we need to really get the message out that people need to keep social distancing for a little time to come before we can hopefully start to ease up on these measures. So we've got these varying results in terms of how efficient they are. We've got the up to 90% with AstraZeneca. Then we've got around 94.5%, 95% with the remaining two. But with AstraZeneca, even though it's got a potentially lower efficiency rate, the fact that it can be transported more easily, stored at warmer temperatures, do, is that a playoff that you can have? You can say, oh, well, you know, at, at least that 5% that we're saving. I mean, this certainly is part of the factor. Now, we have to remember that actually what's being reported as these efficacies, they're not quite comparing like with like, because my understanding of the Oxford results is for the AstraZeneca vaccine is that that efficacy level that's being reported includes people with mild symptoms, whereas I think with the Pfizer vaccine, this 94 percent is um, for those that don't develop severe disease. So I think we're not quite comparing like with like, but you're absolutely right. The advantage with the Oxford vaccine is it can be stored at higher temperatures, which means that hopefully it can be distributed maybe to more remote places. We do need to remember that these vaccines are also going to be available across the world, hopefully. So if they can be stored at higher temperatures, it does mean that maybe for lower and middle income countries, they could be more easily available. And just finally, there's a lot of misinformation circling around vaccines. What can governments do in order to get people on board with these jabs? Well, I think we just need very, very clear messaging that we know that these vaccines have been developed relatively rapidly. That's certainly true. But these companies have been aware that th there might be a situation with a global pandemic where vaccines need to be developed at a very rapid rate. So these sorts of plans have been in place for quite a long time. The key thing is the approval process, this regulatory approval, which is what needs to happen now, will have the same level of stringency. And if these vaccines get approved, they are safe to use and they have got high levels of efficacy. So we do need to get the message out. If we want to get herd immunity, if we want to ease out of these lockdown measures, we need as many people as possible to take the vaccine. Thank you very much for joining us today. From the University of Warwick, Michael Tildesley, thank you.